a quick recap of chapters one and two of Journey to the West. So basically chapter one, Sun Wukong, or I guess the stone monkey is born and becomes a king by jumping through the waterfall. Um, and then chapter two, he journeys to try, or no, sorry. After being king for a little while, he gets a, he gets a little uh, epiphany and starts worrying about his mor mortality. And he, he basically, he fears death. So he goes on a hunt to find immortality. And so he learns from this uh, patriarch um, dude and he teaches them how to do transformations uh, and he learns the somersault cloud thing so he could travel like thousands of I think kilometers in like a few seconds uh, and he also learned the pluck of many uh, skill that you get in Wukong the game and then he came back to his um mountain with his uh I guess his kingdom and he, to find out that they were they're um basically enslaved by a demon and they were taking their children and stuff and so he went and fought the demon hand to hand uh but he kind of cheated by using the pluck of mini and uh all of his minions basically killed the demon and that's kind of how chapter two ends. So we are now going to be starting at chapter three. I'll try to get through three and four, but I'm not too sure if they're the same length. Or not. I like what you got. Good job. Um, okay. Let's start chapter three. The four seas and the thousand mountains all submit. In the ninth hell, the tenth category is struck off the register. We have related how the handsome monkey king returned home in glory, bringing a large sword he had captured when he killed the demon king of confusion. From then on, they practiced the military arts every day. He asked the little monkeys to cut down bamboo to make spears, carve swords out of wood, and learn to use banners and whistles. They learned to advance and retreat and build a camp with a stockade around it. They spent a lot of time playing at this. Once Sun Wukong was sitting in his seat of meditation when he wondered what would happen to us if our games were taken for the real thing. What if it alarmed some human monarch or gave offense to some king or of birds or beasts? They might say that they were having military training for a rebellion and attack us with their armies. You would be no match for them with your bamboo spears and wooden swords. We must have real sharp swords and halibirds. What are we to do about it? Is the music too loud? I feel like I'm not much louder than the, the YouTube or the lo-fi. All right, that's a little better, right? No, it's perfect. Oh, okay. Well, I turned it down just a little bit, I guess. Um, okay, continuing on. When the monkeys heard this, they all said with an alarm, with alarm, your majesty has great foresight, but there's nowhere we can get them. When it was the turn of our four older monkeys to speak, two bare bottom apes and two gibbons, they came forward and said, your majesty, if you want sharp weapons, they can be very easily obtained. How could it be easy, said Sun Wukong. To the east of our mountain, they replied, there is a large, or there is a lake some 70 miles wide that is the boundary of the country of Aeoli. That country has a princely capital and huge numbers of soldiers and civilians live in the city. It must have workshops for gold, silver, bronze, and iron. If you went there, your majesty, you could either buy arms or get them made. Then you could train us to use them in the defense of our mountain. This would give us a long security. 
Sun Wukong delighted with the suggestion. Wait here while I go there, he said. Splendid Monkey King, he leapt on his somersault cloud across the 70 miles of lake and saw that on the other side there was indeed a city wall, a moat, streets, markets, 10,000 houses, a thousand gates, and people coming and going in the sunlight. There must be ready-made weapons here, Sun Wukong thought, and getting a few by magic would be much better than buying them. So he made a magic with his fist and said the words of the spell, sucked in some air from the southeast, and blew it hard out again. It turned into a terrifying gale, carrying sand and stones with it. Where the thunderclouds rise, the elements are in chaos. Black fogs thick with dust cloak the earth in darkness. Boiling rivers and seas terrify the carbs, the crabs and fish. As trees are snapped off in mountain forests, tigers and wolves flee. No business is done in a branch of commerce. commerce, And no one is working at any kind of trade. In the palace, the king has gone to his inner quarters. And the officials in front of the steps have returned to their offices. The thrones of princes are all blown over. Towers of five phoenixes are shaken to their foundations. When the storm blew, the prince of Aeoli fled in terror, and gates and doors were shut in the streets and markets. Nobody dared to move outside. Soon Wukong landed his cloud and rushed straight through the gates of the palace to the arsenal and the military stores, opened the doors and saw countless weapons, swords, sp pikes, sabers, halberds, Battle axes, bills, scimitars, maces, tridents, clubs, bows, crossbows, forks, and spears were all there. At the sight of them, he said happily, How many of these could I carry by myself? I better use the magic for dividing up my body. <gasps> He's going to use pluck a many again. Splendid Monkey King, he plucked a hair from his body, chewed it up, spat it out, made the magic with his fist, said the words of the spell, and shouted, change it turned into hundreds and thousands of little monkeys who rushed wildly about grabbing weapons the strong ones took six or seven each and the weaker ones two or three and between them they removed the lot he climbed back up the clouds called upon a gale of magic and took all the little monkeys home with him the monkeys, big and small, of the mountain of flowers and fruit were playing outside the gates of the cave when they heard the wind. At the sight of countless monkey spirits flying through the air, they fled and hid. A moment later, the handsome monkey king landed in his cloud, put away his mists, shook himself, replaced his hair, and threw all the weapons into a pile beside the mountain. Children, he shouted, come and get your weapons. When the monkey masses looked, they saw Sun Wukong standing by himself on some level ground, and they all rushed over to him to Katao and asked what had happened. Sun Wukong told them the whole story of how he had raised the gale and taken the weapons. After all the monkeys had thanked him, they snatched or sorry, after all the monkeys had thanked him, they snatched sabers, grabbed swords, seized battle axes, fought for pikes, drew bows, stretched crossbows, shouted, yelled, and so amused themselves for the rest of the day. The next day, they paraded as usual. Sun Mukong assembled all the monkey host, and they numbered over 47,000. This had alarmed all the strange beasts of the mountain. Wolves, monsters, tigers, leopards, deer, Muntjacks, river deer, foxes, wild cats, badgers, raccoons, lions, elephants, horses, orangutans, bears, stags, wild boar, mountain cattle, antelopes, rhinoceroses, rhinoceroses, <laughs> little dogs, huge dogs, the kings of various kinds of monsters, 72 in all, all came to pay him homage to the monkey king. They offered tribute every year and attended court in each of the four seasons. They once took part in drill and paid their seasonal grain levies. Everything was so orderly that the mountain of flowers and fruit was as secure as an iron bucket or a wall of bronze. The kings of the monsters sent gongs, drums, colored flags, helmets, and armor in great abundance, and every day there were military exercises. One day, amid all this success, 
the handsome monkey king suddenly said to the other monkeys, You are now expert in the bow and crossbow and highly skilled in other weapons. But this sword of mine is too clumsy for my liking. What shall I do about it? The four veteran monkeys came forward and submitted a suggestion. Your majesty is an immortal, so mortal weapons are not good enough for you. We wonder if your majesty is able to travel underwater. Since hearing the way, Sun Wukong replied, I have mastered the 72 earthly transformations. My somersault cloud has outstanding magical powers. I know how to conceal myself and vanish. I can make spells and end them. I can reach the sky and find my way into the earth. I can travel under the sun or moon without leaving a shadow or go through metal or stone freely. I can't be drowned by water or burned by fire. There's nowhere I cannot go. If your majesty has these magical powers, the stream under our iron bridge leads to the dragon palace of the eastern sea. If you are willing to go down there, go and find the dragon king and ask him for whatever weapon it is you want. Wouldn't that suit you? Wait till I get back, was Sun Wukong's delighted reply. Splendid monkey king. He leapt to the end of the bridge and made a spell with his fist to ward off the water. Then he dived into the waves and split the waters to make way for himself till he reached the bed of the eastern sea. On his journey, he saw a Yaksha demon who was patrolling the air, patrolling the sea. Oh, I should have changed my category here on Twitch here. That's probably confusing. Let's just do just chatting. <laughs> We're not playing Senwa anymore. Uh, no, I lost my spot. Uh, Word off the water, then dived into the waves and split the waters to make way for himself till he reached the bed of the eastern sea. On his journey, he saw a Yaksha demon who was patrolling the sea. The Yaksha barred his way and asked, What sage or divinity are you? Pushing the waters aside like that. Please tell me so that I can make a report and have you properly received. I am the heaven-born sage Sun Wukong from the mountain of flowers and fruit and your old dragon king's close neighbor. How is it you don't know me? When the Yaksha heard this, he hurried back to the Crystal Palace and reported, Your Majesty, Sun Wukong, the heaven-born sage from the mountain of flowers and fruit, who says he is your neighbor, is coming to your palace. Ao Guan, the old dragon king of the Eastern Sea, leapt to his feet and went out to meet Sun Wukong with his dragon sons and grandsons his prawn soldiers, and his crab generals. Come in, exalted immortal, he said, taking Sun Wukong into the palace where he introduced him themselves, seated him in the place of honor, and offered him tea. Then the dragon king asked him, Exalted immortal, when did you find the way, and what magic arts did you acquire? After my birth, said Sun Wukong, I renounced the world and cultivated my conduct, and thus obtained an immortal and indestructible body. Recently, I have trained my sons and grandsons to guard our cave, but unfortunately, I have not yet found myself a weapon. I have long heard that illustrious, that my illustrious neighbor enjoyed the delights of a jade palace with gate towers of cowrie and i was sure that you must have some magic weapons to spare so i have come especially to beg one of you not wishing to refuse his request the dragon king sent commander perch to fetch a large sword and offered and offer it to sun wukong i don't know how to use the sword said sun wukong so could i ask you to give me something else the old Dragon King then sent Colonel Mackerel and Guard Commander Eel to fetch a nine-pronged spear. Sun Wukong leapt down from his seat, took it, tried it out, then flung it down, saying, It's too light, far too light, and it doesn't suit me. I beg you to give me another. The Dragon King smiled as he said, Exalted Immortal, don't you see that the 
This weighs 3,600 pounds? It doesn't suit me. It doesn't suit me at all, protested Sun Wukong. The Dragon King, feeling frightened now, ordered Pro Provincial Commander Bream and Garrison Commander Carp to bring out a patterned heavenly halberd for warding off spells that weighed 7,200 pounds. As soon as he saw it, Sun Wukong bounded forward to take it. He tried a few postures and thrust with it, then stuck it in the ground between them. Still too light. Far too light. The Dragon King, now really terrified, said, Exalted Immortal, that halberd is the heaviest weapon in my palace. As the old saying goes, said Sun Wukong with a grin, Never think the Dragon King has no treasures. Have another look, and if you find anything satisfying, I'll give you a good price for it. I really have nothing else, the Dragon King replied. As he was speaking, his dragon wife and dragon daughters came in from the back of the palace and said, Your Majesty, by the look of him, this sage must be really somebody. The piece of miraculous iron that anchors the Milky Way in place has been shining with a lovely rosy glow for the past few days and creating a most auspicious atmosphere. Perhaps it has started to shine to greet this sage. That piece of miraculous iron is one of the nails that you, the great, used to fix the depths of rivers and seas when he brought the waters under control, said the Dragon King. What use could it be? Never mind whether it's useful or not, his wife replied. Just give it to him and let him do with it as he pleases. At least you'll get him out of the palace. The Dragon King did as she, she suggested and described the piece of iron to Sun Wukong, who said, Bring it out and let me see. <clears throat> it can't be moved. You will have to go and look at it yourself, exalted immortal. Where is it? Take me there, said Sun Wukong. The Dragon King took him into the middle of the sea treasury, where all of a sudden they could see 10,000 rays of golden light. Pointing at it, the Dragon King said, That's it, where all that light is coming from. Sun Wukong hitched up his clothes and went to give it a feel. He found that it was an iron pillar about as thick as a measure of a peck of grain and some 20 feet long. Seizing it with both hands, he said, It's too thick and too long. If it were a bit shorter and thinner, it would do. As soon as these words were out of his mouth, this precious piece of iron became several feet shorter and a few inches thinner. Sun Mukong tossed it in his hands, remarking that it would be even better if it were thinner still. The precious iron thereupon became even thinner. Sun Mukong was taking it out of the sea treasury to have a look at it when he saw that it had two gold bands around it. While the middle part was made of black iron, there was an line of inlaid writing near the bands which said that it was the as you will cold banded cuddle cudgel weight 13,500 pounds Sun Wukong was delighted though he did not show it I think that this little darling will do whatever I want as he walked along he weighed it in his hand and said reflectively if it were even smaller still, it would be perfect. By the time he had taken it outside, it was 20 feet long and as thick as a rice bowl. Watch him as he uses his magical powers to try a few routines with it. Rolling all around the crystal palace, the old dragon king was trembling with fright. and The little dragons were scared out of their wits. Therapins, freshwater turtles, seawater turtles, and alligators drew in their heads while fish, shrimps, lobsters, and giant turtles hid their faces. Holding his treasure in his hands, Sun Wukong sat down in the main hall of the Palace of Crystal and said with a smile to the Dragon King, Many thanks, worthy neighbor, for your great generosity. The old ki Dragon King humbly acknowledged his thanks, and Sun Wukong went on, This piece of iron will be very useful, but there is one more thing I want to ask. What might that be, exalted immortal? asked the Dragon King. If I hadn't got this cudgel, that would be the end of the matter. 
but as I have got it, got it. The problem is that I don't have the clothes to go with it. What are we to do about it? If you have any armor here, I'd be most obliged if you gave me a suit. The Dragon King said he had not any. I guess should not have to trouble two hosts, said Sun Wukong. I won't leave without one. Please try some other sea, exalted mortal. You may find one there. It's better to stay in one house than to visit three. I beg and implore you to give me a suit. I really don't have one, replied the Dragon King. If I had, I would present it to you. If you really haven't, then I'll try this cudgel out on you. Don't hit me, exalted immortal. Don't hit me, pleaded the Dragon King in terror. Let me see whether my brothers have one that they could give you. Where do your brothers live? They are Ao Qin, Ao Qin, the Dragon King of the Southern Sea, Ao Shun, the Dragon King of the Northern Sea, and Ao Run, the Dragon King of the Southern Sea. If da I'm damned if I'm going there, as the saying goes, two in the pocket is better than three owing. So be a good chap and give me one. There's no need for you to go lofty, immortal, the Dragon King replied. I have an iron drum and a bronze bell. In an emergency, we strike them to bring my brothers here in an instant. In that case, said Sun Wukong, hurry up and sound them. And indeed, an alligator general struck the bell with a terrapin marshal beat the drum. While a terrapin marshal beat the drum. The sound of the bell and the drums startled the other three dragon kings who had arrived and were waiting together outside within the instant. One of them, Ao Jin, 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 said, Elder brother, what's up? Why the drum and the bell? It hurts me to tell you, brother, the old dragon king replied. There's this so-called heaven-born sage from the mountain of flowers and fruit who came here this morning saying that I was his neighbor then demanded a weapon. I offered him a steel pronged spear, but he said it was too small and a patterned halberd that he said was too light. Then he picked up the miraculous iron that fastens the Milky Way and tried a few, mo few movements with it. Now he's sitting in the palace and demanding a suit of armor, but we haven't got one. That's why I used the bell and the drum to call you here. You three must have some armor. Please give him a suit, then we can get rid of him. When Ao Qin heard this, he said in a fury, To arms, brothers! Arrest the criminal! No, no, it's out of the question, said the old dragon king. If that iron cudgel of his gets you, you're done for. If it hits you, you die. If it comes close, your skin is broken. And if it is so much as brushes against you, your sinews are smashed. Ao Run, the Dragon King of the Western Sea, said, Second brother, you must not attack him. Instead, we should put a suit of armor together for him, then send him away. We can send a memorial about it, about it to heaven. Then heaven will, of course, punish him. You're right, said Ao Shun, the Dragon King of the Northern Sea. I have a pair of lotus root, cloud walking shoes. I've brought a suit of golden chainmail, said Ao Ren, the Dragon King of the Western Sea. And I have a phoenix winged purple gold helmet, added Ao Chin, the Dragon King of the Southern Sea. The old Dragon King was very pleased, and he brought them into the palace to meet Sun Wukong and present the equipment to him. Is that all the armor you get in the game? Maybe. Uh, equipment tool. Sun Wukong put on the golden helmet and the armor and, and the cloud walking shoes, then charged out, waving his cudgel and saying to the dragons, My apologies for disturbing you. The four dragon kings were almost in indignant, but we will not go into the discussions on the protest they sent to heaven. Watch the Monkey King as he parts the waters and goes straight back to the Iron Bridge, where the four senior apes can be seen waiting for him at the head of the monkey host. 
Sun Wukong suddenly leapt out of the waves without a drop of water on him and gleaming with gold. As he came across the bridge, the monkeys were so astonished that they fell to their knees and said, How splendid you look, your majesty, how splendid. Sun Wukong, his face lit up with youthful vigor, climbed up to his throne, thrust his cudgel into the ground in, in their midst. The foolish monkeys all tried to grab his treasure, but it was as futile as a dragonfly trying to shake an iron tree. They were unable to move it in the slightest. Biting their fingers and sticking out their tongues, they said, Grandpa, it's so heavy. How can you possibly lift it? Sun Wukong went over, lifted it with one hand, and laughed as he said to them, Everything has its rightful owner. This little treasure has been lying in the sea treasury for go goodness knows how many thousands of years. But it just happened to start shining this year. The Dragon King thought it was a piece of ordinary iron and said it was the miraculous treasure that holds the bed of the Milky Way in place. None of his men could move it, so he had to ask me to go and fetch it myself. It was more than 20 feet long then, and as thick as a peck measure. When I picked it up, I felt that it was too big, and it shrank till it was several times as small. I told it to get even smaller, and it did that too. Then I told it to get smaller still, and it got many times smaller again. I hurried out into the light of day to look at it, and I saw that there was an inscription on it that read, As you will, gold banded cudgel. Weight, 13,500 pounds. Stand aside, and I'll make it change again. Holding his treasure in his hand, he said, Shrink, shrink, shrink and it became as small as an embroidery needle, tiny enough to be hidden in his ear. Your majesty, the monkeys cried out in astonishment, bring it out and play with it again. So the monkey king brought it out of his ear again, laid it on the palm of his hand and said, grow, grow, grow. It became as thick as a peck again and 20 feet long. Now that he was really enjoying himself, he bounded over the bridge and went out of the cave. Clasping his treasure, he used some of his heaven and earth magic, bowed and shouted, Grow. He became a hundred thousand feet tall. His head was as big as a mountain, his waist like a range of hills, his eyes flashed like lightning, his mouth seemed to be a bowl of blood, and his teeth were as, so were as swords and halberds. The cudgel in his hands reached up to the 33rd heaven and down to the 18th hell. The tigers, leopards, and wolves, the beasts of the mountain, and the 72 monster kings all katowed and bowed in terror, trembling so much that they went out of their minds. A moment later, he reverted to his proper size, turned his treasure into an embroidery needle, and hid it in his ear, and went back to the cave. The panic-stricken kings of the monsters all came to offer their congratulations. There was a great display of banners and drums, and the air resounded to the sound of gongs and bells. Rare delicacies were set out in great quantities, cups brimmed with coconut toddy and the wine of, of the grape. And the monkey king feasted and drank with his people for a long time. Then training went on as before. The Monkey King named the, f the four senior apes as his four stalwart generals. He named the two bare-bottomed apes, Marshal Ma and Marshal Liu, and called the two gibbons General Bing and General Ba. He entrusted the stockade, questions of dis discipline, and rewards to these four. Thus freed from cares, he mounted the clouds and rode the mists, wandering round the four seas and enjoying the thousand mountains. He practiced his martial arts, visited many a hero, used his magical powers, and made a wide and distinguished circle of friends. He met with six sworn brothers of his, the Bull Demon King, the Salamander Demon King, the Rock Demon King, the Camel King, the Macaw King, and the Lion King. With him included, they made seven. For days on end, they talked about politics and war passed round the goblet, strummed, sang, piped, danced, went off on days out together. 
and enjoyed themselves in every possible way. A journey of thousands of miles seemed to them to be no more than a walk in the courtyard. It could be said that they traveled a thousand miles in the time it takes to nod one's head and covered 300 with a twist of the waist. One day, he instructed his four stalwart generals to arrange a feast for the six other kings. Oxen and horses were slaughtered. Sacrifices were made to heaven and earth, and the asse assembled monsters danced, sang, and drank themselves blotto. When he had seen the six kings out and tipped his senior and junior officials, Sun Mukong lay himself down under the shade of the pines beside the bridge and was asleep in an instant. The four stalwart generals made the others ra stand round and guard him, and they all kept their voices down. In his sleep, the handsome monkey king saw two men approach him with a piece of paper in their hands, on which was written, Sun Wukong. Without allowing any explanations, they tied up his soul and dragged it, staggering along till they reached a city wall. The monkey king, who was gradually recovering from his drunken stupor, look up, looked up and saw an iron plate on the wall, on which was inscribed, World of Darkness, in large letters. In a flash of realization, he said, The world of darkness is where King Yama lives. Why have I come here? Isn't King Yama? That's a character in Dragon Ball Z, isn't it? <clears throat> Anyways. Your life in the world above is due to end now, his escort said, and we were ordered to fetch you. To this, the Monkey King replied, I have gone beyond the three worlds, and I am no longer subject to the five elements. I don't come under King Yama's jur jurisdiction. How dare you grab me, you idiots? But the fetchers of the dead went on tugging at him, determined to drag him inside. Don't think so? I thought... Yep. Oh no. King Yama. There's a King Yama. That's the guy he, he sees when he when Goku first dies. Probably this is supposed to be the same person though. Um okay, anyways. The monkey king lost his temper, pulled his treasure out of his ear, and gave it a shake. It became as thick as a rice bowl. It only took a slight movement of his arm to smash the two fetchers on the of the dead. It, okay, wait, what? It only took a slight movement of his arm to smash the two fetchers of the dead to pulp. He untied his bonds, loosened his hands, and changed into the and charged into the city, whirling his cudgel. So terrifying that the ox-headed and horse-faced devils that they fled in all directions for cover. All the devil soldiers rushed to the Senlu palace and reported, Your majesty, disaster, disaster. A hairy-faced thunder god is attacking us out there. Stricken by panic, the ten kings who sit in the ten palaces, judging the criminal cases of the dead, hurriedly straightened their clothing and went out to look. When they saw his ferocious expression, they lined up in order and shouted at the tops of their voices, Please tell us your name, exalted immortal. If you don't know who I am, replied the Monkey King, then why did you send men to bring me here? We wouldn't dare do such a thing. The messengers must have made a mistake. I am Sun Wukong, the heaven-born sage of the water curtain cave on the mountain of flowers and fruit. What are your posts? We are the Ten Kings. Tell me your names at once if you don't want a bashing. To this, the Ten Kings replied, We are the King of Qingguan, the King of Chu Jiang, Chu Jiang, King Songdi, King Wu Guan, King Yama, King Impartial, the King of Mount Tai, the Metropolitan King, King of 
Beyond Shang and the King of the Ever Turning Wheel. To this, Sun Wukong replied, You are all kings and have es esoteric understanding, so why don't you know any better? I, Sun Wukong, have cultivated the way of immortality and will live as long as heaven. I've soared beyond the three worlds and leapt outside the five elements, so why did you send your men to get me? Please don't be angry, lofty immortal, the ten kings said. Many people in the world share the same name, so perhaps the fetchers of the dead went to the wrong, pal wrong place. Nonsense, nonsense, as the saying goes. The magistrate may be wrong and the surgeon may be wrong, but the man who, who comes to get you is never wrong. Go and get the register of life and death for me to see. The ten kings invited him to come into the palace and look through it. Sun Wukong went into the Sen Luo, Sen Luo palace with his club in his hand and sat down in the middle of the hall facing south. The ten kings then ordered the presiding judge to fetch the register. And the judge hastened to his office and brought out five or six documents and ten registers. He looked through them all one by one but could not find Sun Wukong's name in the sections devoted to hairless creatures, hairy creatures, feathered creatures, insects, or scaly, scaly creatures. Then he looked through the monkey section. Now, although monkeys looked like men, they were not entered under the humans. Although the, they were like the hairless creatures, they did not live within their boundaries. Although they were like running animals, they were not under the jurisdiction of the unicorn. And although they were like birds, they were not ruled by the phoenix. There was another register, and Sun Wukong looked through this one himself, under soul number 1350, was the name of Sun Wukong, the heaven-born stone monkey, who was destined to live to the age of 342 and die a good death. I won't write down any number of years, says Sun Wukong. I'll just erase my name and be done with it. Bring me a brush. The judge hastily handed him a brush and thick black ink. Sun Wukong took the register, crossed out all the names in the monkey section, and threw it on the floor with the words, The account's closed. That's an end of it. We won't come under your control any longer. Then he cudgeled his way out of the world of darkness. The Ten Kings dared not go near him and they all went to the Azure Cloud Palace to bow in homage to the Bodhisattva Histava Kitsagarbha. I love you. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. And discuss the report they would send up to heaven. But we will not go into this. After charging through the city wall, the Monkey King tripped over a clump of grass tried to regain his balance and woke up with a start. It had all been a dream, and he stretched himself. He heard his four stalwart generals and the other monkeys saying, Your Majesty, time to wake up. You drank too much and slept all night. Never mind about my sleeping. I dreamt that two men came for me. They dragged me to the city wall of the world of darkness, where I came round. I showed them my magic powers and went yelling all the way to the Sen Luo, Luo Palace where I had an argument with those ten kings and looked through the register of life and death of us. Wherever there was mention of your names in the register, I crossed them out. I won't come under the jurisdiction of those idiots anymore. All the monkeys kowtowed to him in gratitude. The reason why from that time on so many mountain monkeys had never grown old is that their names are not on the books of the officials of the underworld. When the handsome monkey king had finished telling his story, the four stalwart generals informed the other monster kings, who all came to offer their felic felicitations. I don't know what the heck that is. Good night, Ryan. Yep, I got work in the morning. Um. Okay, where was I? 
do, 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 do. A few days later, his six sworn brothers also came to the, congratulate him. And all were delighted to hear how he had struck the names off the books. We will not describe the daily feast that followed. Instead, we will describe how one day the Supreme Heavenly Sage, the greatly compassionate Jade Emperor of the Azure Vault of Heaven, was sitting on his throne in the Hall of Miraculous Mist in the Golden Gated Cloud Palace. Surrounded by his immortal civil and military officials at morning court, when the immortal Chu Hong Hongji reported, "Your Majesty, Ao Guang, the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea, has presented a memorial outside the Hall of Universal Brightness, and is awaiting a summons from Your Imperial Majesty." The Jade Emperor ordered that he be called in, and the Dragon King came to the Hall of Miraculous Mist. When he had done obedience an immortal page came from the side of, to take his memorial the jade emperor read it th read it through it ran your subject Ao guan the humble dragon of the eastern sea of the eastern continent of superior body in the nether watery regions reports to the jade emperor of the azure vault of heaven recently one sun wukong an immortal fiend born on the mountain of flowers and fruit now living in the water curtain cave bullied this humble dragon and occupied my watery house by force he demanded a weapon by displaying magical prowess he insisted on having armor by showing off his evil powers he terrified the watery tribe and made the tortoises and alligators flee in terror the dragon of the southern sea trembled the dragon of the western sea was made miserable the dragon of the Northern Sea had to hang his head and come in submission, and I, your subject, Ao Guan, humbled himself before him. We had to present him with a miraculous iron cudgel, a golden phoenix winged helmet, a suit of chain mail, and a pair of cloud walking shoes, and we escorted him out politely. He continued to show off his martial arts and magic powers, and all he had to say for himself was, my apologies for disturbing you. There's truly no match for him, and he is and he is uncon uncontrollable. Your subject now presents this memorial and respectfully awaits your sage decision. I humbly beg that heavenly soldiers be sent to arrest this evil demon, so that the sea and the mountains may be pe may be at peace and the ocean may enjoy tranquility. When the Jane Emperor had read this through, he ordered, Let the Dragon God return to the sea. We shall send generals to arrest the demon. The old Dragon King bowed till his head touched the floor and took his leave. Then the vener venerable immortal G, a heavenly teacher, reported, Your Majesty, the King of Kui Ching Chingguan, one of the ministers of the underworld has come with a memorial from the Bodhisattva Kristikarbha. <laughs> Damn, these words are getting hard. A jade girl messenger took the memorial, which the jade emperor read through it. It ran. The regions of darkness are the negative part of the earth. Heaven contains gods while the earth has devils. Positive and negative are in a constant cycle birds and beasts are born and die male and female al alternate life is created and change takes place male and female are conceived and born this is the order of nature and it cannot be changed now the evil spirit the heaven-born monkey of the water curtain cave on the mountain of flowers and fruit is pre presently giving full reign to his wicked nature committing murders and refusing to submit to discipline. He killed the devil messengers of the ninth hell with his magic, and he terrified the ten benevolent kings of the underworld with his power. He made an uproar of the Sen Luo palace and crossed some names out by force. He has made the race of monkeys completely uncontrollable and given eternal life to the macaques. He has annulled the law of trans migration and brought them beyond birth and death i impoverished monk that i am importune the might of heaven by presenting this me memorial i prostrate 
myself to beg that heavenly soldiers be dispatched to subdue this fiend bring the positive and negative back into order and give lasting security to the underworld when the jade emperor had read this through he ordered let the lord of darkness return to the underworld we shall send generals to arrest the demon the king of queen ching Chingguan then bowed till his head touched the floor and took his leave. His Celestial Majesty then asked all his civil and military officials, When was this monkey demon born? What is his origin, that he should have such powers? Before he, before he had finished speaking, Thousand Mile Eye and Wind Accompanying Ear came forward from the ranks of officials and said, this demon monkey is the stone monkey who was born of heaven 300 years ago. At the time, nobody paid any attention to him, and we do not know where he refined himself and became an immortal in recent years, so that he has been able to make the tigers and dragons submit to him and to strike his name off the register of the dead. Which divine general shall be sent down to capture him? asked the Jade Emperor, and before he had finished speaking, the great white planet stepped forward bowed down and submitted all beings in the upper worlds that have nine apertures can become immortals this monkey has a body that was created by heaven and earth and conceived by the sun and moon his head touches the, the sky and his feet stand on the earth he drinks the dew and eats the mist how does he differ from humans if he has succeeded in cultivating the way of immortality and can subdue dragons and tigers i beg your majesty to remember your life-giving mercy and hand down a sage edict of amnesty and enlistment summoning him to his to this upper world and inscribing his name on the list of office holders thus keeping him here under control if he obeys your majesty's heavenly commands he can later be promoted, and if he disobeys, he can be arrested. This will both avoid military operations and be a way of winning over an immortal. The Jade Emperor, delighted with the suggestion, ordered that it should be put into effect. He told the Wen Wen Q Star Officer to compose the edict, the command and commanded the great white planet to persuade the monkey to accept the amnesty. The great white planet left heaven by the southern gate and brought his propitious cloud down by the water curtain cave, where he said to the little monkeys, I am an envoy from heaven, and I am carrying a divine edict inviting your great king to the upper world. Go and tell him at once. The little monkeys outside conveyed the message by relays into the depths of the cave. Your majesty, there's an old man outside carrying a document on his back. He says he's an envoy from heaven with an invitation for you. The handsome monkey king was delighted. He said, I've been thinking of going up to heaven to have a look around for the past couple of days, and now a heavenly envoy has come to invite me. Ask him in at once, he shouted, hastily straightening his clothes and going out to meet the envoy. The planet came straight in, stood facing the south and said, I am the great white planet of the west and I have come down to earth with an edict of amnesty and enlistment from the Jade Emperor to invite you to heaven to be given office as an immortal. I am very grateful to you, venerable planet, for condescending to come here, replied Sun Wukong with a smile. Then he told his subjects to prepare a feast to entertain the visitor. <clears throat> I'm afraid I can't delay, replied the planet, as I am carrying a divine edict, so may I ask your majesty to come back with me now. We can talk at leisure after your glorious elevation. Thank you for coming, said Sun Wukong. I'm sorry you couldn't take some refreshments before leaving. Then he called for his four stalwart generals and ordered them. Give my sons and grandsons a thorough training. When I've had a look round in heaven, I'll take you all to live up there with me take you all to live with me up there the four stalwart generals accepted their orders and the monkey king made his cloud carry him up above the clouds he was raised to a high-ranking heavenly office 
listed among the courtiers in the clouds. If you don't know what office he was given, listen to the explanation in the next installment. <clears throat> I'm out of water. Anyways. Chapter 4. Dissatisfied at being appointed protector of the horses. Not content with the title of equal of heaven. The great white planet left the depths of the cave with the handsome monkey cave. And they ascended together to their clouds. As Sun Wukong's somersault cloud was exceptionally fast, he reached the southern gate of heaven first leaving the great white planet far behind. Just as he was putting away his cloud to go in, his way was barred by the heavenly guardian Virudhaka Virud Virud and his powerful heavenly soldiers Liu, Guo, Bi, Deng, Xin, Zhang, and Tao, who blocked the gate of heaven with their spears and swords and refused to let him in. Also, I apologize for butchering it. All these Chinese names. This old great white planet is a trickster, said Sun Wukong. He invited me here, so he has no business to have me kept out with spears and swords. Just as he was kicking up a row, the planet suddenly arrived. Sun Wukong flung his accusation at him. Why did you play this trick on me, you old foggy? You told me you came from an edict of amnesty from the Jade Emperor to invite me here, so why did you arrange for these people not to let me in through the gate of heaven? The Great White Planet laughed. Don't be angry, your majesty. You've never been here before. Your name is not on the books here, and the heavenly soldiers have never met you. Of course they could not let you in just for the asking, but when you've seen his celestial majesty and been given office among the immortals, you will be able to come and go as you wish, and nobody will try to stop you. Be that as it may, said Sun Wukong, I'm not going in. The great white planet would not let him go and asked him to go in with him in spite of it all. As they approached the gate, the planet shouted, Heavenly officers of the gates of heaven, sergeants and soldiers, let us in. This is an immortal from the lower world, and I'm carrying an edict from the Jade Emperor summoning him here. Only then did the heavenly king, Zeng... Zeng Xing and his soldiers withdraw their arms and stand back. Now the Monkey King began to trust the Great White Planet. He walked slowly in with him and looked at the view. Truly, it was his. First ascent <clears throat> to the upper world. Sudden entry into paradise. 10,000 beams of golden light shone from a reddish glow. A thousand strands of Propitious vapor puffed out purple mist. See the southern gate of heaven. Deep green, crystalline, crystalline, shimmering bright, studded with jewels. On either side stood scores of heavenly marshals, tall as the roof beams next to the pillars, holding metal tipped bows and banners. All around stood gods in golden armor, brandishing their clubs and halberds. Wielding their cutlasses and swords, the outside was remarkable enough, but the inside astonished him. Here were several mighty pillars, round which coiled tawny bearded dragons, their golden scales gleaming in the sun. There were long bridges, where strutted phoenixes brilliant of plum plumage and with bright red crests. A rosy glow from Sean, a rosy glow shone, shone with heavenly light. Thick green mists obscured the pole star. In this heaven, there are 33 heavenly palaces. The palace of clouds dispersed. The Vers Ravana palace, the palace of five lords, the sun palace, the palace of flowery bliss. Every palace had golden animals on its roof. Then there were 72 precious halls. The hall of morning audi audience, the hall of rising into space. The precious light hall, the hall of the heavenly kings, the hall of the master of miracles. Jade unicorns on every column. On the terrace of the star of longevity grew flowers that never wither. Beside the stove of 
doctoring elixir were herbs that stay green forever. In front of the facing the sage pavilion, crimson gauze clothes glittered like stars. Lotus hats shone with gold and jade. Jade hairpins and pearl soon pearl soon shoes. Sewn shoes. Uh, golden seals on purple cords as the golden bell tolled. The three classes of divinities approached the steps and submitted memorials. As the heavenly drum was beaten, 10,000 sage kings attended the Jade Emperor. Then they entered the Hall of Miraculous Mist, where jade doors were studded with gold, and phoenixes danced before the crimson gates. Winding arcades everywhere carved in open work, layer on layer of eaves with dragons and phoenixes soaring. On top was a majestically purple, bright, perfectly round, and dazzling golden gourd shaped Beniel. Below, fans hung from the hands of heavenly consorts, while jade maidens proffered magical magic clothes. Ferocious, the heavenly generals guarded the court, majestic, the immortal officials protecting the throne. <clears throat> In the middle were crystal dishes filled to overflowing with great monad pills, agate jars in which stood twisted coral trees. All the wonderful things in heaven were there, none of which are seen on earth. Golden gates, silver chariots, and a purple palace. Precious plants, jade flowers, and jasper petals. The jade hairs of the princes at court ran past the altar. The golden rooks of the sages present flew down low. The Monkey King was fated to come to heaven, rather than be sullied by the immortal world. The Great White Planet led the handsome Monkey King to the outside of the Hall of Miraculous Mist. He went straight to the Imperial Presence without waiting to be summoned, and did ob obedience to the throne. Obeisant? Obeisance to the throne? Sun Wukong stood bolt upright beside him, not bothering with any court etiquette, but just concentrating on listening to the Great White Planet make his report to the Jade Emperor. In obedience to the Divine Edict, your subject has brought the Demon Immortal here. The Jade Emperor lowered his curtain and asked, And which of you is the Demon Immortal? Me, replied Sun Wukong, only now making a slight bow. The faces of the officials went white with horror as they exclaimed, what a savage monkey! He has the impudence to answer me, and without even prostrating himself first, he must die! In reply to this, the Jade Emperor announced, Sun Wukong is a demon immortal of the lower world, who has only just obtained human form, so he is not acquainted with court procedure. We shall forgive him this time. We thank you for your mercy, said the immortal ministers. Only then did Sun Wukong express his respect by bowing low and chanting na a ah, ah at the top of his voice. The Jade Emperor ordered his immortal civil and military officials to find a vacancy in some department for Sun Wukong. <clears throat> the Star Lord Wuku, Wuku stepped forward from the side and reported, there are no vacancies in any of the palaces, halls, and departments of heaven except for a superintendent in the imperial stables. Then make him protector of the horses, ordered the Jade Emperor. All the ministers thanked him for his mercy, apart from Sun Wukong, who just expressed his respect with a loud na'a. -a. The Jade Emperor then told the wood planet to take him to the imperial stables. <clears throat> the wood planet accompanied the delighted Monkey King to his post and then went back to the palace. The Monkey King then called together the deputy and the assistant superintendent, the bookkeeper, the grooms, and all the other officials, high and low, to find out about the duties of his department. He would he found that he had to look after a thousand heavenly horses, chestnuts and stallions, courser and chargers, dragon and purple sw swallow, swallow, Pegasus and Shushan, Juti and Silver, Yao Niao and Flying Yellow, Tao Tu and Feathers, Red Hair and Faster Than Light, Dazzler and Horizon, 
Miss Soarer and Victory, Wind Chaser and Matchless, Flying Wing and Galloping Mist, Lazy Whirlwind and Red Lightning, Bronze Cup and Drifting Cloud, Scoobald and Tiger Stripe, Dust Free and Purple Scales, the four Ferghana Steeds, the eight Chargers and nine Gallopers, Coursers that can cover 300 miles, all these fine horses were neighing in the wind, chasing the lightning, mighty in spirit, pawing the mist, climbing the clouds, great in their strength. <clears throat> the Monkey King looked through the register and counted the horses. In the stables, the bookkeeper was responsible for ordering the fodder. The head groom was in charge of currying the horses, chopping up and cooking the fodder, and giving them water. The deputy superintendent and his assistant helped to oversee the work. The protector of the horses looked after his charges, sleeping neither by day nor by night. It's true that he fooled around by day, but at night he looked after the animals with great diligence, waking them up and making them eat whenever they fell asleep, and leading those still on their feet to the trial. In the sight of him, the heavenly horses would prick up their ears and paw the ground, and they became fat and plump. Thus, more than half a month slipped by. <clears throat> On one morning that was a holiday, all the officials of the stables held a feast, both to welcome and congratulate the protector of the horses. In the middle of the party, the Monkey King suddenly put down his cup and asked, What sort of office is this protector of the horses? What the name suggests, that's all. Which official grading does it carry? Unclassified. What does unclassified mean? Bottom grade, the others replied, going on to explain. It is a very low and unimportant office, and all you can do is look after the horses. Even someone who works as consistent, consistently, consistently <laughs> as your honor, <clears throat> and that gets the horses so fat will get no more reward than someone saying good. And if anything goes all at all wrong you will be held responsible and if the losses are serious you will be fined and punished the monkey king flared up on hearing this he gashed his teeth and said in a great rage how dare they treat me with such contempt on the mountain of flowers and fruit i am a king and a patriarch how dare he trick me into coming here to feed his horses for him it's a low job for youngsters not for me I won't do it. I won't. I'm going back. <clears throat> he pushed the table over with a crash, took his treasure out of his ear, and shook it. It became as thick as a rice bowl, and he brandished it as he charged out the imperial stables to the southern gate of heaven. As the celestial guards knew that his name was on the register of immortal officials, they did not dare to block his path, but let him go. Let him out through the gate. He descended by cloud and was back on the mountain of flowers and fruit in an instant. Seeing the four stalwart generals and all the kings of the monsters drilling their troops, there he shouted in a shrill voice, Children, I'm back. The monkeys all bowed to him, took him into the heart of the cave, and asked him to sit on his throne while they prepared a banquet to welcome him back. <coughs> <coughs> Congratulations, your majesty, they all said. After, a after over a dozen years up there, you must be coming back in glory and triumph. What do you mean, over a dozen years? Asked the Monkey King. I've only been away for a fortnight or so. Your majesty can't have noticed the time passing in heaven. A day in heaven lasts as long as a year on earth. May we ask what office you held? It hurts me to tell you, replied the Monkey King with a wave of his hand. I feel thoroughly humili humiliated that Jade Emperor doesn't know how to use a good man. A man like me, protector of the horses. That meant I had to feed his animals for him and wasn't even given an official grading. I didn't know this at first, so I fooled around in the Imperial stables until today. When I found out from my colleagues how low the job was, I was so angry that I pushed the table over and quit the job. That's why I've come back. Quite right, too, the other monkeys said. Your majesty can be king in our cave, paradise, and enjoy as much honor and pleasure as you like. 
Jeez, that cat was loud. <laughs> the Y go and be his groom. Then they gave orders for wine to be brought at once to cheer their king up. As they were drinking, someone came in to report. Your Majesty, there are two single-horned devil kings outside who want to see you. Ask them in, said the Monkey King, and the two formally dressed devil kings hurried into the cave and prostrated themselves. Why have you come to see me? asked the handsome Monkey King, and they replied, We have long heard that Your Majesty is looking for men of talent, but we were unable to see you before. Now that Your Majesty has been given heavenly office and come back in triumph, we would like to offer you this yellow robe as a token of our congratulations. We also hope that you will not reject us, although we are low and worthless, but we accept our humble services. But we'll accept our humble services. An exalted monkey king put on the yellow robe and his happy subjects bowed to him in order of precedent, precedence. <clears throat> The two devil kings were appointed commanders of the van, and when they had thanked the monkey king for, their, for this, they asked, "What office did your majesty hold while you were all that, while you were, while you were all that time in heaven?" <clears throat> Weird sentence. The jade emperor has no respect for talent," replied the monkey king. "He made me something called protector of the horses." Your Majesty has such miraculous powers. You should never have been feeding his horses for him. You should have made a great, <clears throat> great sage equaling heaven, shouldn't you? The Monkey King was beside himself with delight at this suggestion, and he kept saying how splendid it was. Get me a banner made at once with the words great sage equaling heaven in big letters on it and put up a pole to hang it from. He ordered his four stalwart generals from now on i am to be called great sage equaling heaven not your majesty or king pass this order on to all the other kings of the monsters we will leave him at this point when the jade emperor held his morning court the next day the heavenly teacher zhang led the deputy and assistant superintendents to the imperial stables to the Vermilion steps, bowed low, and reported, Your Majesty, Sun Wukong, the new protector of the horses, left heaven yesterday because he thought his office was too humble. Just as he was speaking, the heavenly guardian Virudhaka came from the southern gate of heaven with his heavenly soldiers and reported, The protector of horses has gone out through the gate. We do not know why. <clears throat> On hearing this, the Jade Emperor commanded, let the two divine officials return to their posts. We shall send heavenly soldiers to capture this devil. The, pa the, <clears throat> the pagoda bearing heavenly King Li Jing and Prince Nezha stepped forward from the ranks of those attending the audience, and they memor memorialized. Your Imperial Majesty, we beg you to command us, your incompetent servants, to subdue this fiend. The emperor was delighted with this suggestion, and he appointed the pagoda bearing heavenly king as demon quelling high marshal and prince Nezha as great god of the seas. He told them to take their forces down to the lower world at once. Heavenly king Li and Nezha Kataud took their leave, went straight back to their own palace, and assembled their troops, commanders, and officials and officers. They put the mighty miracle god in charge of the vanguard and General Fishbelly in command of the rear. While General Yaksa was made adju adjutant, within an instant they were outside the southern gate of heaven and they went straight to the mountain of flowers and fruit. They chose a piece of level and open ground on which to construct a fortified camp and ordered the mighty miracle god to issue the challenge to battle. On receiving the <clears throat> this order, the mighty miracle god tied on his armor firmly and went to the water curtain cave, holding his flower spreading battle axe. When he got there, he saw huge numbers of devils, wolves, tigers, and leopards wielding spears, brandishing swords, leaping around, fighting each other, and making a great noise outside the little entrance to the cave. 
A cursed beast, shouted the mighty miracle god. <clears throat> Tell the protector of the horses at once that I am a heavenly general come on the orders of the Jade Emperor to subdue him. If you make him come out and surrender immediately, it will save the lot of you from being wiped out. <clears throat> the devils went rushing into the cave and reported, Disaster! Disaster! What disaster? The monkey king asked. There's a heavenly general outside who says he's come on the orders of the Jade Emperor to subdue you. If you go out and surrender immediately, he says he'll spare our lives. Fetch me my armor, said the monkey king. He then donned his golden helmet, tied on his golden armor, put on his cloud walking shoes, and took as his as you will gold banded cudgel in his hand. <clears throat> he led his troops out of the cave and drew them up in a battle array. The mighty miracle god gazed wide-eyed at the excellent monkey king. <clears throat> on his body was gleaming golden armor, on his head a dazzling golden helmet, in his hand a gold-banded club, on his feet a pair of cloud-walking shoes to match. His devil eyes shone like stars, his ears were long and hard, his sturdy frame could be transformed at will, his voice rang clearly as a bell. The sharp-mouthed horse protector with protruding teeth wanted to become a sage equaling heaven. The mighty miracle god shouted in a harsh voice, Insolent ape, don't you recognize me? The great sage Sun Wukong replied at once, I've never met you before. How should I know which wretched little deity you are? Tell me your name at once. I'll get you, you conceited baboon. So you don't know who I am? I am the Heavenly General Mighty Miracle, the commander of the vanguard of Heavenly King Li, the Pagoda Bearer. I've come here on the orders of the Jade Emperor to accept your surrender. Take off your armor at once and submit to the mercy of heaven, or I'll wipe out every animal on the mountain. And if you so much as hint at a, at a refusal, I'll smash you to powder. Stop talking so big, you lousy god, retorted the fruit furious monkey king and give that long tongue of yours a rest i just love to kill you with this cudgel of mine but if i did there'd be no one to deliver my message for me so i'll spare your life hurry back to heaven and tell that jade emperor that he doesn't know how to use a good man why did he make me waste my infinite powers on feeding his horses for him take a look at what's written on my standard if he's willing to give me this title officially, I'll call off my troops and let heaven and earth continue in peace. But if he refuses, I'm coming up to the Hall of Miraculous Mist to knock him off his dragon throne. When the mighty miracle god heard this, he looked hard and saw that a tall pole had been planted outside the entrance to the cave, on which hung a banner reading, Great Sage Equaling Heaven. <laughs> he mocked. You ignorant ape. What shameless effort, effrontery. Effront, effrontery. Effrontery? You want to be a great sage equaling heaven. Take that. He swung with his battle axe at the monkey king, who, quite unflustered, parried with his gold banded cudgel. It was a fine battle. The cudgel was called As You Will. The axe was named Flower Spreader. As soon as the two met, you could not tell which was better. Axe and club locked together. One was concealing his magic powers. One was a big-mouthed boaster. They used their magic to breathe out cloud and mist. When they opened their hands, they scattered sand and dust. The Heavenly General was a master of magic. Endless were the changes the Monkey King could make. When the cudgel was raised, it was like a dragon playing in the water. As the axe came down, it was a phoenix among the flowers. Although the fame of Miracle was known throughout the world, his skill was no match for his enemy. If the great sage lightly twirled his club, a mere touch would paralyze. The mighty Miracle God was no match for his opponent. He hastened to block the Monkey King's first blow with his axe, which broke it in two with a crunch. He fled for his life as fast as he could, and the Monkey King said mockingly, You bag of pus! I'll spare you this time. Hurry back with my message and look sharp about it. The mighty miracle god returned to his camp, went straight to the pagoda bearing heavenly king Li Jing, knelt before him and said with an awkward laugh, 
The protector of horses has really tremendous magic powers. I was no match for him. He beat me, and now I have come to take my punishment. This fool has ruined our morale, exploded the heavenly King Lee in a fury. Take him away and off with his head. <clears throat> Prince Nezha, who was standing to one side, stepped forward, bowed, and said, Do not be angry, your majesty. Forgive the mighty miracle god, and let me go and do battle. Then we'll see who's boss. The heavenly king accepted his, his advice and told mighty miracle god to go back and look after the camp while he awaited his punishment. When he had put on his armor and helmet, Prince Nezha charged straight out of the camp to the water curtain cave. Sun Wukong, who was just going to pull back his troops, saw the ferocity of his onslaught. What a fine prince he was. His hair and tufts barely cover, covers his scalp, his cloak not over his shoulders. How striking his intelligence, how elegant his air. Indeed, he is the scion of a unicorn in heaven. In truth, he is a phoenix immortal from the clouds, the seed of dragons and different from the common herd. herd. This fine youth is not at all like mortals. With him, he carries six divine weapons, endless his transformations as he soars through the air. Now he has received an edict from the Jade Emperor's mouth, making him commander of the three temples of the masses. Sun Wukong went up to him and asked, Whose little boy are you then? What do you mean, charging up to my door? Stinking monkey fiend, shouted Prince Neza. Don't you know who I am? I am Neza, the third son of the pagoda-bearing heavenly king, and I have commanded... I have been commanded by the Jade Emperor to come here and arrest you. You do talk big, don't you, little prince, said Sun Wukong, laughing at him. But as you've still got all your milk teeth and are still wet behind the ears, I'll spare your life and I won't hit you. <clears throat> do you see what it says on my standard? Go and tell the Jade Emperor that he gives me that title. I'll call off my armies and submit to him once more. But if he doesn't do what I want him to, I'll surely attack the Hall of Miraculous Mist. Neza looked up and saw the words, Great Sage equaling heaven. You wicked monkey. How dare you give yourself a title like that? Whatever your magic powers may be, don't worry. All you're getting is my sword. Give me a few swipes then, replied Sun Wukong. I won't move. Charge! yelled Neza in a passion and at once he had three heads and six arms which made him look most ferocious in his hands he held six weapons a demon beheading sword a demon hacking cutlass a demon binding rope a demon quailing pestle an embroidered ball and a five in a fire wheel and wielding all these he rushed straight at Sun Wukong <clears throat> At the sight of him, Sun Wukong exclaimed with astonishment, Well, my boy, you certainly know a trick or two, but just behave yourself and watch what I can do. Our dear great sage shouted, Change! And he too had three heads and six arms. He shook his gold band cudgel, and it turned into three cudgels, which he gripped with his six hands to ward off Neza's blows. It was a great fight, and it made the earth shake and the mountains tremble. Six-armed Prince Neza, heaven-born monkey king, well-matched opponents, but in the same class. One sent down to the lower world on a mission, the other priding himself as a fighting bull. Fast moves the point of the demon beheading sword, and evil spirits fear the demon hacking cutlass. The demon binding rope flies like a dragon, while the demon quailing pest pestle has the head of a wolf. The fire. What are you doing, cat? <clears throat> the fire wheel flashes with lightning and the embroidered ball shoots everywhere the great sages three as you will cudgels block and parry with consummate skill though many hard fought rounds prove inconclusive the prince refuses to call the battle off making his six weapons multiply in number he throws them in the millions at the monkey king's head but the monkey king fearless roars with laughter as his iron clubs whirl and think for themselves. One becomes a thousand, one thousand ten. Hey. <clears throat> the 
Their wind dance fills the sky as if the dragons. All the demon kings shut their gates in terror. Every goblin on the mountain finds some place to hide. Cloud black, the anger of the heavenly troops. Whistling like the wind, the gold banded cudgels on the one side. The blood curdling war crimes, cries of the heavenly host on the other. The spine chilling banners of the monkey fiends. Both parties are equal in fighting courage. Neither could be said to be the winner. Prince Nezha and Sun Wukong both used their divine powers to their full as they fought 30 rounds. When the six weapons of the prince turned into thousands and tens of thousands, so did Sun Wukong's gold banded cudgel. The air was filled as if the air was filled as if with drops of rain or sh shooting stars, and there was no way of telling who was winning. As Sun Wukong was deft of hand and quick of eye, he plucked one of his hairs from his body in the midst of the fray and shouted, Change! It changed into his own double to mislead Neza, while his real self le leapt around till he was behind Neza and struck at his left, sho left shoulder. Neza was in the middle of performing a spell when he heard the whistle of the cudgel through the air and twisted away as fast as he could, but he was unable to avoid the blow and had to flee wounded. He brought his magic to an end, put his six weapons away, reverted to his true appearance, and abandoned the fields of battle in defeat. This had all been observed by Heavenly King Li, who was on the point of sending reinforcements when his son appeared before him and reported in fear and trembling. Father, the protector of the horses is very powerful. My magic was outclassed and he was wound and he has wounded me in the shoulder. <clears throat> the color drained from the face of the horror struck Heavenly King as he said, If the creature has magic powers like that, how are we going to defeat him? Outside the gates of the cave, the prince went on to report. There's a banner on a pole that reads, Great Sage Equaling Heaven. He bragged that if the Jade Emperor gave him this title, he would call everything off. Otherwise, he said he would attack the Hall of Miraculous Mist. In that case, said the Heavenly King, we'll disengage now, go back to heaven, and request that more heavenly troops be sent to capture this wretch. There's plenty of time. The prince in pain and the prince in pain and unable to go on fighting went back to heaven with the Heavenly King and put in his request in this request. But of that, no more of the moment. Watch as the Monkey King returns to the mountain in triumph to receive the congratulations of the 72 kings and the monsters and his six sworn brothers. There was great drinking and singing in the cave pr paradise, Sun Wukong said to his six sworn brothers, as I've called myself great sage equally in heaven, you can all call yourselves great sages too. Honorable, honorable brother, you're right, roared the bull, king, bull demon king. I shall call myself the Great Sage Matching Heaven. I'll be the Great Sage Overturning the Sea, said the Salamander Demon King. I'll be the Great Sage Throwing Heaven into Confusion, said the Rock Demon King. I'll be the Great Sage Who Moves Mountains, said the Camel Demon King. I'll be the Great Sage Who Travels with the Wind, said the Maka King. And I'll be the Great Sage Who Drives Away Gods, said the Lion King. The seven great sages then did just as they pleased and gave themselves the titles they chose, and after enjoying themselves all day, they went home. Heavenly King Li and Prince Neza led their forces straight to the Palace of Miraculous Mist and made this request. We, your subjects, took our forces down to the lower world under your divine edict to subdue the immortal fiend Sun Wukong, but to our surprise, we found that, the, that his magical powers were too far reaching for us to, to be able to defeat him. We therefore hope that your Imperial Majesty will send more troops to exterminate him. How could a mere monkey goblin have such great powers that you actually need more troops? Asked the Jade Emperor. Prince Nezha then came forward and memorialized. We beg your Majesty to spare us the deaths we deserve. That monkey fiend has an iron cudgel that he used to defeat the mighty miracle god and wound me on the, sho on the shoulder. <clears throat> he has set a banner up outside the entrance to his cave that reads, Great Sage Equaling Heaven. And he says that if you give him this office, he will stop fighting and submit. Otherwise, he will attack the Hall of Miraculous Mist. 
When the Jade Emperor heard this, he asked in horror, How dare that monkey fiend talk so wildly? Send all the generals to execute him at once. As he spoke, the great white planet stepped forward from the ranks of officials. That monkey fiend knows how to talk, he suggested, but he has no idea about real power. If more soldiers were sent to fight him, they might not be able to overcome him at once, and their energies would be wasted. But if your imperial majesty were to show your great mercy, you could send down a pass passive victory <clears throat> amnesty and let him be a great sage equaling heaven. It would only be an empty title that he that he was given, just as just an honorary appointment. What do you mean an honorary appointment? asked the Jade Emperor. He would be called a great sage equally in heaven, but he would not be given any responsibility or paid any salary. He would be kept between heaven and earth, where his evil nature would be under control and he would be kept from wickedness. <clears throat> Thus heaven and earth can be at peace, while sea and sky enjoy tranquility. The Jade Emperor approved this suggestion and ordered that a new edict should be issued for the great white planet to deliver. The great white planet left once more through the southern gate of heaven and went straight to have a look at the water curtain cave on the mountain of flowers and fruit. It was quite different from there. There was an awe-inspiring and spine-chilling atmosphere, and every kind of fiend was present. They were roaring and leaping round with their swords, spears, cutlasses, and stabs. As soon as they saw the great white planet, they all went for him. Will your commander please come forward, said the planet. I would trouble you to inform your great sage that I am a heavenly envoy sent by the Jade Emperor, and I am carrying a divine edict with an invitation for him. The fiends rushed in to report. There's an old man outside who says he's come from heaven with an edict of invitation for you. <clears throat> when Sun Wukong heard this, he said, I'm glad he's come. I expect he's the great white planet who came before. Although I wasn't given a decent job last time, I went to heaven. I did get up there and learn my way around. If it's him again, his intentions must be good. He told his commanders to put on a big display of banners and drums and to turn out a guard of honor to welcome him. Then the great sage, wearing his helmet, his yellow robe over his armor and his cloud walking shoes, hurried out of the cave at the head of, the, of his monkey host, bowed in greeting and shouted in a loud voice. Please come in venerable planet forgive me for not being here to welcome you what's up davy planet walked straight into the cave stood facing the south and said great sage when you left the imperial stables beside you you, <clears throat> you found the post too humble the officials of that department naturally reported the matter to the jade emperor the jade emperor decreed that all officials have to work their way up from the bottom and asked why you objected to its being humble after this, Heavenly King Lee took Neza down to the lower world to do battle with you. Your divine powers, Great Sage, were more than they expected, and they suffered defeat. On their return to heaven, they reported that you had set up a banner and wanted to be a Great Sage equally in heaven. <clears throat> All the generals wanted to punish you, but I, Great Sage, ran the risk of punishment by suggesting that the army sh should not be called out, and that your majesty should be given a post instead. The Jade Emperor approved my memorial, and that is why I have come here to invite you. I am most grateful for this honor after the trouble I caused you earlier, replied Sun Wukong, but I am not sure whether the, there is such a title as Great Sage equaling heaven in the upper world. After obtaining imperial approval for this title, said the planet, I came down bearing a decree. If anything goes wrong, I'll bear the responsibility. <clears throat> A highly delighted Sun Wukong tried his hardest to persuade the planet to stay to a banquet, but without success, so he went with him by propitious cloud to the southern gate of heaven. The heavenly generals and the soldiers all greeted them with respectfully folded arms, and they went straight to the hall of miraculous mist. The great white planet did obeisance and said, in obedience to the imperial edict, your subject has summoned Sun Wukong, the protector of the horses, and he is present. Let Sun Wukong come forward, said the Jade Emperor. We do now proclaim you great sage equaling heaven. 
Your rank is now very high. Let there be no more mischief from you. The monkey simply chanted, na a a to express his thanks to the emperor. The Jade Emperor then ordered the two officials in charge of public works, Zhang and Lu, to build a residence for the great sage equaling heaven to the left of the peach orchard. <clears throat> in the residence, there were to be two offices, a tranquility office and a calm divin divinity office. Both these offices were to have immortal clerks and senior and junior assistants. He then told the Star Lords of the Constellation Five to escort Sun Wukong to his post, in addition gave him two bottles of imperial wine and ten golden flowers. <clears throat> uh, where was I? And admonished him to settle down and keep out of mischief. The Monkey King accepted the order and went that same day with the Star Lords of the Constellation Five to his residence where he opened the bottles of wine and drained them dry with the help of all present. He then saw the star officials off and returned to his own palace. From then on, he lived in happiness and, con and content and enjoyed untrammeled pleasure in the palace, truly. His immortal name was forever inscribed in the register of eternal life to be transmitted for 10,000 ages, free of the wheel of rebirth. If you don't know what happened next, listen to the explanation in the next installment. <coughs> there we go. That's about as much as my voice can handle. <coughs> so that's chapters three and four. <coughs>